North Coast Jazz 2023 uh, takes place in just about two and a half weeks' time. And uh, here on AM Prime, we are fortunate enough to partner with North Coast Jazz and to welcome uh, its performers to the program to get an uh, insight as to their role in North Coast Jazz and precisely why they're performing and what we can look forward to. Well, this morning, I am uh, very fortunate to welcome to the program Mr. Mungal Patasar. Yes, you've heard his name before. He's the founder and lead of Mungal Patasar and Panther. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Well, thank you so much for joining me. It certainly is a privilege. I, as I was saying earlier, you know, I grew up uh, listening to Mungal Patasar. Um, his iconic tune, um, um, Dreadlock, is always stuck in my head. Uh, but now I'm actually uh, very lucky, I guess, to ask you precisely that song in particular, Dreadlock. How did you even come up with a name for that particular tune? Well, it's a kind of, I'll make it short. We were sound checking at the pool at the Hilton. In those days, Hyatt was not there. <laughs> <laughs> and um, near the pool, this guy was, was swimming. And then when he came out of the water and shook his hair, the evening sun, um, it was around six in the evening or later, and the rays and the water created such a color, such a color, that immediately that song just came to mind. And the whole song unfolded within a matter of three minutes. Wow. Well, that, that I, you know, would have never guessed that, but uh, taking inspiration from uh, one of the perhaps simplest things, something that happens every day. That's rather yes. interesting. Uh, but mm -hmm. now let's get on to North Coast Jazz 2023. You will be performing, but why is Mungal Passes uh, uh, going to North Coast Jazz? Why are you uh, uh, going on the stage to perform at this concert? The thing about it is we have appeared in jazz festivals worldwide, and it is one of our favorite um, menus for performing. We have performed all over Europe, every major jazz festival, even in rock festivals. So North Coast Jazz is just another one. We've gone to Tobago, St. Lucia, um, Suriname, all the jazz festivals. So North Coast Jazz is just another one of those. And um, to me, quite prestigious in Trinidad and Tobago. So it's our privilege to join them. Well, from what I understand, this is also your first appearance uh, as part of the setup uh, at North Coast Jazz. Is that correct? Yes, that's a fact, yes. Uh, apparently, the organizers didn't know about us yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, have to, I'll have to correct that. Now they know about you for sure. Uh, but, but this is the thing, Mr. Patterson. Some people might be wondering, I know you just mentioned that you've been to jazz concerts throughout the world, um, uh, and even rock concerts, which is quite amazing. Um, but the sitar, people are probably thinking, listen, how could the sitar, classical... Uh, Indian music instrument uh, could could be performed at uh, a jazz concert. Uh, what are your thoughts on, on, on how do we answer that question? The thing about it, that has a history in it, and I don't think that your program will allow for a long history. But let's suffice it to say that when I came back after studying sitar, um, Indian classical music, which I studied, I got a master's degree in English, Indian classical music, was not really accepted in Trinidad and Tobago. So immediately I had to create a music that will become palatable to world, to the world. My target was world class. And so I started creating music. In fact, most of the 90% of the music that we played were all composed and created by me. And um, that music has been so well accepted all over Europe that um, the jazz festivals and they they invited us naturally just when they heard our music. Mm -hmm. So that's how it was termed as jazz. And then I remember at the end of 2000, the Vogue magazine had it as the music of the new millennium. In other words, it was accepted at the highest quarters as a new form of music. Mm -hmm. Do you see, uh, you, you mentioned the, the term palatable. Do you think that the sitar is now widely more accepted here in Trinidad and Tobago? Or, or do you think a lot more needs to be done in perhaps expanding opportunities for, for younger people to, to learn about the sitar and, and learn to play the sitar? 
Well, the thing is that my I have I had classes running for over thirty years, and the inter- people come and they learn for a week or two and then give up because the sitar it's not an easy instrument to play. Um, it is pain very painful at, at the beginning because it hurts your finger. It's worse than a guitar in the sense that you've got to pull the strings to make the notes. My daughter happened to become a sitar player because she has belly, she has guts, and she has been playing since she was a baby. In fact, my two daughters uh, have been playing sitar, and they become sitar players only because of that. They are with me all the time. But the people, other people who came, which was a mountain to over 200 people came to learn sitar, and unfortunately, I just lost them after one or two lessons. Mm. And that's 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 rather sad. But uh, here in Transvago, our diversity, our culture, we as a people, we're so blessed and fortunate. Is that something that uh, North Coast Jazz 2023 is is championing by bringing uh, these diverse cultures to one stage? Well, you know, when you say diverse culture, <clears throat> I hope you don't mean that. Our culture is out of the mainstream. Our music is out of the mainstream because the music has always been more representative of Trinidad and Tobago than I think any other music. Because in our music, we have, we do everything from Calypso back, I mean, a lot of my original composition, but they all are composed according to West Indian norms and standards with the input of the sitar and Raga. So it is a complete mixture and fully representative of the Indian classical music on the Trinidad landscape. Mm-hmm. So to me, it finds a place naturally within the potpourri that is Trinidad and Tobago. I like how you describe that, the potpourri that is Trinidad and Tobago. Mm-hmm. But, but uh, you know, being able to, to, to create such palatable music and, and place it, as you just mentioned, if it's naturally into the potpourri of Trinidad and Tobago. Um, uh, precisely, how difficult or easy was that? Because, I mean, we've had a conversation thus far where it wasn't uh, widely accepted or even palatable. Um, and following your studies, you came back to Trinidad and expanded. Um, and, and describe to us your journey in particular and, and the challenges you would have faced in, in achieving what you have. Well, a great many people would have been disappointed when I first came back as a sitar player. Um, and the thing is, when I when I offered them the classical music, I mean, remember, when I did my master's degree, I said first in the world, I got the gold medal. It means that my standard of playing was not below any professional sitar player in India. I came back with that standard of music, but yet Trinidad, Trinidadians did not accept the classical music. So I started to simplify the music and make it simple. In fact, take a simple chutney song and, and make it into a, a, a piece of music or take a calypso and recreate it to suit the sitar. And um, I mean, that's the work that had to be put into to make the sitar more amenable to the taste of Trinidad and Tobago. Mm-hmm. So that. Mm. And Mr. Patterson, you celebrated, I think, your 75th birthday, was it last year, um, if I'm not mistaken? 70, 77. 77th. Uh, and thanks yeah. for that correction. But it, it, you're not slowing down anytime soon, are you? You're continuing to, to, to uh, uh, light up stages around the Caribbean and the rest of the world? Well, the thing is, it all depends on, I believe firmly that God has, is in charge of that. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as I, as my fingers are nimble, I mean, as long as my fingers are nimble and I can sit cross-legged, um, I will play. I think to me that uh, that is also a, a challenging part because you mentioned having to pull the strings and the effect on your finger. But even having to, to sit upright like that in order to play the sitar for such a long period, I mean, it does wonders to your back, doesn't it? Well, the thing about it, I sit, I sit down and practice for at least four to six hours daily, and that prepares me for the stage. So I can sit very comfortable, just as you sit on a chair. I can sit on the floor with my legs crossed over in a in a an Anansi kind of uh, setting, um, in a web-like fashion. 
But the point is that that has been how I set from childhood, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm also, uh, there's a hint that you may be releasing a new album at North Coast Jazz 2023. No, I don't know where that news came from. We are preparing a new album, but we are not ready yet to release. Mm -hmm. So, I, But I'm releasing new songs, at least three new songs, at North Coast Jazz. Oh, excellent. So, as we are concluding, and uh, thank you very much for joining me this morning, I look forward to seeing you at North Coast Jazz because I will be there. Uh, Mongol Partisan Panza on the stage. Uh, uh, what would be your your pitch to the viewers out there saying, listen, come on, come and see me, come and come to North Coast Jazz 2023. I think there are many people who did not yet have a chance to see us, strange enough, in Trinidad and Tobago. And I think this would be a golden opportunity for them to see what a son of the soil is able to produce in Trinidad and Tobago. Different one, two, standard, international standard of, of music. All the members of my band, whom we haven't spoken about, are all professional musicians and all work very, very hard to produce their own music. The youngest addition to the band is a young fellow by the name of Joe, Jonathan Agostini. He is, uh, a, what you call, a rock musician who joined in the band and loves it very much. Um, we have the panelist, Harold Headley, who is a veteran and used to be head of music department at the University of the West Indies. Um, we have um, Kareem Collingwood, who is an amazing bass guitarist. And we have a young fellow who plays drums, Jonathan um, Charles. So we have a nice cast of young people um, who just rejoined the band because the band has a new face now compared to, say, pre-COVID. Mm -hmm. Well, Mr. Pastor, actually, thank you very much as well for highlighting uh, your band and members of your band, Panther, and also uh, helping us to realize uh, that uh, you are creating new opportunities for others as well, um, and uh, certainly a, a focus on the younger people. Um, but as mentioned previously, I certainly look forward to your performance at North Coast Jazz 2023. Uh, and, and to meeting the rest of the band Panther. But uh, thank you very much for joining me so early this morning, sir. And uh, we'll see you in a couple of weeks. We look forward to also. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, sir. Keep well. Goodbye now.